I'm Alice Peters and in this video I'm going to talk about my journey from being a young observer for IUPAC in 2017 to becoming involved in projects with IUPAC Polymer Division. So hopefully it can give you a bit of insight into what IUPAC does. And I have to tell you, when I started in this process, I was very unaware of what they were doing. So I've heard of IUPAC in my chemistry classes, so I knew about the nomenclature. And then I knew they were involved in naming of new elements. And that was about it. The Royal Society of Chemistry gave me the opportunity, together with three other young academics in the UK, to attend the big biannual uh, IUPAC conference, which in 2017 was in Brazil. So I was appointed a mentor, so someone who was already involved with IUPAC for several years, to kind of guide me through the process. And what started in the beginning, in the first couple of days, is really that you had a kind of speed networking session. So IUPAC has eight different divisions, but then there's also, also multiple subcommittees. And what they did in the IUPAC polymer division is that you directly get involved in projects as a young observer. So in my case, uh, you don't necessarily start with the heavy nomenclature stuff and working in definitions, but I did get involved in the Wikipedia project, which I will tell you more about later. And then towards the end of the conference, I was actually invited together with another young observer uh, to become an official observer next year at the next IUPAC polymer division meeting. And when I went there, and maybe it was because of the jet lag or that I actually spent like a whole week in those meetings, you can tell how intense this process is. So even though you get emails throughout the year on the projects, you really have that week to come together as groups and in order to finalize projects. And when I started to become more familiar with the terms in 2019 in Paris, this is when I actually became a member and I also got more involved in projects. 2020 has been a challenge for everyone and also for the IUPAC Polymer Division. Because even though you can have virtual meetings, you have to remember that we're meeting people with, uh, working across the world, across different time zones. And it's not very easy to coordinate that when you've got members in both the US and in Australia and New Zealand. Big time gap there. But I'm very glad to say that we pulled this off. And now I'm also in the opportunity to start proposing my own projects. So this, you can really see the growth from being a young observer to actively becoming involved in the process. Luckily, IUPAC didn't have it in its centenary this year, but they did celebrate the 100th anniversary last year in Paris. And during the first 100 years, you will see there has been a lot of emphasis on uh, nomenclature, uh, statistical determination, but also very critical evaluation of certain concepts. And as we're going into the new century, you will see there will be more public engagement. So they recently opened the IUPAC YouTube channel. Um, and then also the IUPA Polymer Division is very active on social media, so you can follow them. And I recently had their Twitter anniversary. IUPAC is 100 years old, but only a few years ago the IUPA Polymer Division turned 50. And it was originally founded by the Czech chemist Otto Richtler, who was also the, the, the father of the modern soft contact lens. And if you want to know more about how he actually developed these contact lenses, just using a set of toys, please have a look at the recommended video. As a young observer, I was also struck by the diversity in projects that you do at IUPAC. So it's not just focused on nomenclature, even though academic terminology is a big part of it. But I remember one of the, the first week I was there, but also people were talking about healthy cooking, engaging with the public. So there's many things to it. But if you want to know more about the terminology, you can go to the Polymer Wikipedia page, because what the IUPAC Polymer Division has done in order to make these um, definitions accessible to everyone. They've added boxes to Wikipedia and they've added more than 75. So I'm sure you will come across them. And this way you can also access the definitions that we use. Other projects might involve critical evaluations of parameters related to polymers, such as kinetics. It might involve commercial polymers, but there is also a very educational element to it. So on our website, you can find resources on polymer educations that are in multiple languages, so it is accessible to everyone. But how can you get involved in IUPAC or how can you find out more about what they do? Is this just limited to researchers? The answer to this is no. What you will see, there are events across the globe that you can participate in. The picture here is the Global Women's Breakfast in Malaysia. And I'm also glad to say I hosted this in Manchester 2020. And this highly successful event is returning in 2021. So put this date in your diary. You can also subscribe to our UPAC channel where you can find more about our activities, but you can also find educational resources. 
and you can contact us via the website and social media. This way you can actually propose projects yourself, so do get in touch with us. And then finally, I'd really like to thank the Royal Society of Chemistry for giving me this opportunity to get involved with IUPAC. So if you're thinking about applying for it when the next conference is coming around, please don't hesitate. If you want to find out more about my, my work in polymer chemistry, then please subscribe to our channel and have a look at the other videos.